and our band's third. So. so thinking back to the very first time you played, um, what sort of lessons have you learned along the way that you could tell yourself four years ago? Um, I mean, I, I have loved the progression of Warp Tour and my understanding of it. When it my first year, I was waking up at 7 a.m. every day before pretty much everyone else, and I was outside all day long and usually asleep by 8 to 10 p.m. at the latest. But uh, um, by you know over the years, it's kind of changed into me going to bed later and waking up later. Um, but I mean, I. I love that I've, you know, I've kind of been involved in different things. I used to get up every day and go in with our merch guy, find a spot, and do all that. I've tried to embrace doing everything that you can do on Warp Tour just so I would be as, I guess, experienced as possible. Um, like one day, you know, I want to continue to work in music long after I'm touring. So I, I like to, to know all aspects of, you know, different tours, especially one, um, you know, like Warp Tour. So um, I don't know if I would go and do anything differently. Um, maybe this year I would have done a little bit less because I think uh, I, I packed on a lot of a lot of things. But um, it'll be worth it at the end and when I go home and, and I was able to look back and or I'll be able to look back and see that I had a great summer and I made the most of it. So what are some, sort of the extra things that you're doing along the way? Uh, well, I do our press every day. We have a signing, and then I do another um, signing because my clothing line's out as well. Um, things like press. I do teach a band happy class. I do guest vocals for Breathe Carolina and our set, um, all that. And in addition to that, I always go out, like whether it's after our set or at the end of the night, and... Um, you know, try to hold a box of CDs and hope someone doesn't think we suck and buys them. And you somehow find time to go to catering and all of the other normal things that you need to do to survive the day. Sometimes. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you're able to do I, that? I've missed catering probably 60% of the time so far, but um, I, I've stocked up at Walmart and I am very good with the microwave, so I, I make do. How are you able to bring your dog on Warp Tour? By not telling anyone. Well, you totally told people <laughs> when you post pictures of Colby uh, Jack. It, it's kind of like a mystery because a lot of people don't see her or they'll see her at night wandering between the buses and be like, I think I saw a dog. But there's actually five French Bulldogs out on this tour, so... Uh, I could just be like, oh, no, it's someone else's, someone else's. No, she she stays on the bus. I mean, she's a small dog. Um, Warped, I think, has a policy of no dogs. But um, we, it, it goes both ways. Some of it's Warped Tour and some of it's bus drivers. But since we're in a bandwagon and we hire our own driver, whoever we want, um, and he, 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 he's in his own quarters, so, yeah, is. I, I vacuum like twice a day, so as long as I keep it decently clean, um, and my whole band loves having her out, um, so um, yeah, I just she she fits in well. You're She's really responsible dog. too. That that's awesome. I uh, I'm just like OCD with cleaning. I I can't stand a mess, but yeah. That's not easy on Warp Tour, I can imagine. Uh, no, no. So real came out uh, last week, or no, sorry, last no. month. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. Ha month birthday to to that um tell me what the writing process was like for real um we actually spread it out over i want to say we started december of 2012 and then we started recording it august of 2013 so um that's the longest we've taken of really focused in on actually writing a record. Sometimes the guys just write things for fun, but they don't really materialize. But we started the, the process a lot sooner this time. Um, that way, when we were home, we could go and practice what the guys have been working on. So I think it was just um, instead of like the last record, we demoed out something like 60-something songs. Um, and we recorded 16 or 17 of them. Um, that was just stupid um, to do. One, because it's just way too many songs, but two, um, we weren't able to really focus individually on the songs. We would get done, and instead of coming back and trying to make them better and take three or four 
up to you know even ten stabs at making the song better. You know, it was like kind of one and done. We, we would we would write a song and then we ran out of time to really go back and and make any changes. So, I think um, that this record is just a lot more developed um, than our last one, and we did a better job at um, you know writing while on the road um, this time. How are you able to write on the road? Because some bands can't. They actually put aside special, you know, a certain time to, to just do that. How do you find the time, especially? You, it sounds like you have a really packed day, especially this summer. Well, I mean, this summer I'm doing that because we aren't writing or doing anything. You know, we got everything out of our system, so everyone's focusing on other things. But um, normally we tour eight to ten months out of the year, so when we are home, no one wants to really be right back into band mode. Everyone wants to go home and uh, kind of recharge the battery. So we made sure that we set aside time um, throughout the week, every week, while we were on tour um, during the course of that, you know, like 10 months or so. And um, we just forced ourselves to be like, okay, you know, we could be going out, we could be doing other things, but let's, let's work on our record. So that's just what we did. Um, we wrote a lot of it um, on, on, on uh, the, right before, in Europe, um, I can't even remember what tour that was. Um, uh, we had a headlining tour in, in Europe and the UK, and then we went straight into a uh, tour with Killswitch Engage, and we we finished most of the record between those two tours um, so that when we got home, we could actually like work on just developing the songs. Um, and But other than that, we, we took breaks. And, and now with this album cycle, we took two months off before Warped, and we're taking two months off after. Um, so we're valuing our, our time off, and it really, you know, there's no need to over-tour these days. I mean, there's enough tours for everyone to go to all the time that um, really, you know, people only have so much money to go to, to spread around. So we'd rather make it count when we do tour, um, and that, that's kind of our goal. I'm sure those months off in August and September seem so far away right now. <laughs> It, it does, but Warped is, uh, it, it's going pretty fast. I mean, it, my body feels like it's been going on forever, but in, in my mind, it, it feels like it's, it's going by really, really quick. Only 20 more stops to go, I heard, so if that makes you feel any better. It, it's funny, because 20 on a normal tour is like, oh, we have most of the way to go, but it's just like the halfway um, point, um, you know, for here. Or, or if there's 20 left, we have the majority of the tour left to do versus we're over halfway now so and it's also the 20th anniversary of warp tour what were you up to 20 years ago 20 years ago i was almost eight years old um so i was probably um let's see eight i would have been about second grade i was probably beating up my little brother and playing on my electronic jeep uh, one of those things that kids always drive around um doing that and probably just lying a lot to my parents, getting my mouth washed out with soap, all, all the normal little childhood stuff. So probably at eight you didn't have a whole lot of flexibility on choosing your musical influences at the time. I'm, I'll, I'll assume the average age is about 13 or 14, maybe a little bit younger if you're lucky. Who were some of the, the earliest uh, bands that you listened to? Well, when I was younger, I just listened to what my parents listened to. So when it was my dad, it was like the Eagles, Boston, Steve Miller Band, a lot of like classic rock, um, and then some range of country. And then when it was my mom, it was like Celine Dion, classical music, um, m more like that whole spectrum. But I actually like still to this day, I love all kinds of music because of my parents. Um, and right around the time I was nine or ten was when I started listening to my own music. I got um, a little um, cassette player radio, uh, I think on my ninth birthday. And from that point on, I started incorporating my own um, musical um, taste. But I still, you know, like, still to this day, I love every everything that my parents listen to. I like it. That's a, a good collection. So how old were you when you realized you could sing? Uh, I mean, my my parents, um, so my whole family, like, is either they sang or, you know, like, both my parents can play piano, although they didn't do it when I was younger. Um, they started when I was older. I didn't even know my mom could play piano until I was, like, 14. Um, and But we just didn't have instruments in the house. 
Um, so what we did was you know, my dad would put on records and we'd clean the house and run around and sing. So I guess I've been singing my, my whole life. Um, I think most people probably have. Um, but when I started to think of it as something else that I did for fun that I wanted to maybe get better at, it wasn't until I was probably like 15, 16 where I was like, this is cool to, to do and started thinking that maybe it would be awesome to be in a band. Um, but I never wanted to be in a band for my job. I, I, I held out being in the NBA for a very, very long time, but I just did not grow. And uh, so that, that kind of ended that dream. But if they saw how you jump, there, there might be, there might be, there could have been some hope. I mean, when did the, uh, the backflip take birth? Um, well, I've been, I've been doing like tumbling stuff, me and all my brothers. I'm actually the worst at it. Um, one of my uncles is a former Olympic um, gymnast coach, um, gymnastics coach. Um, so he taught us all when we were younger. Um, except for me, I was the last one to learn. I actually learned um, by my school's um, uh, tumbling coach, and he pretty much, in in much nicer terms, said that if you're not a pussy, do a backflip right now. And uh, so uh, I, I did. He's like, you're not going to land on your head because then if you do that, I'm going to just yell at you and you're going to be in pain. And But he, he, it sounds worse than what it was. It was coming from a loving area. Um, but yeah, so I, I did it, and I guess I've been doing it ever since. And I don't want, I'm not, I'm not even going to be the one that's going to say anything that might jinx that, so I'm going to move on to the next question. I noticed that you're wearing uh, a t-shirt that I'm hoping that you sell. This? Yes. Uh, no, but this was made um, for me. Um, we're sponsored by a company called Young and Reckless, um, and we've been, become really good friends and close with them and um, they they made a limited run of some like muscle tank things um, and um, oddly enough they all got ripped off of me so I had none left and so I hit them up and and I asked I was like can you please just make me a bunch and so they they made a, a run just for us and, and sent them to us so I wear it probably too often but um, uh, yeah, it, it's called Young and Reckless, and they're they're rad. What about your T-shirt company? Uh, mine is is also on on Warp Tour. It's called Resist and Rebel. Um, I wear it every once in a while. Um, it I would if my newer stuff uh, had been delivered. I'm still waiting on it. That's what I was actually just emailing right before because having a lot of issues with shipments. But um, yeah, um, I, I I've worn it many, many, many times, many shows, so I decided to change it up a bit and, and rep someone else. Lots of band members have t-shirt lines. What makes yours unique? Um, I don't really think it is. I don't think most people's are, um, honestly. Uh, you know, I, I make clothes that I like that I would want to wear, um, and I think a lot of people do the same thing. Um, I'm not going to say that mine's better than anyone else's. Um, but, you know, I, I'm glad that people like it and, and choose to wear it as well. Um, I, I think that, you know, with, with clothes, it, it's all about, you know, be making something that you're proud of. Um, now, I think there's some people who make things that they just do it because they know it'll sell well and they're com maybe completely against it. Um, I try to not go down that path. I, I wear some, I make clothes that I could wear in front of my grandma kind of a thing, so. Um, or that she could wear, and um, so yeah, she she's rad. Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of my mindset with it. I just if, if no one else liked it, that'd be fine with me because I started it just to make clothes for myself and grandma. So yeah. what's up next for the Word Alive after Warp Tour? Um, well, like I said, we're taking like a two month um, break. Um, I think we're gonna film another music video. Uh, we have a few shows. Um, in September that we're going to announce right after Warped. Um, we're headlining the UK and a little bit of mainland Europe, October, November, and then right after Warped as well, we're announcing a November, December tour that we have. So, uh, What song are you working on a video for? Um, 
we we can't say yet, and it's not because I don't want to. It's because we honestly are having trouble picking, and everyone wants to do a different song 